Okay, we're going to be looking at this 816 of the grade 11 text uh, workbook for HSE. Um, they have given us these two figures over here, a front view and a top view of this hopper, and um, or square to square transition piece, they call it. And um, what they're asking you to do is, first of all, draw those two things out, as I've done over here, um, to a scale of one to one, develop the surface uh, the surface of the transition piece using the triangulation method. Okay, that's very important when they ask you to do it in a particular method. You must use their method. Um, make edge AB the seam. Okay, they've got a little A and B over there, and that means that my seam that I need to join it on is this edge over here. I've labeled it 1 and A. Okay, but you're going to be using that seam when you do the actual um, the construction of the uh, development. Right, uh, so show all necessary construction and fold lines. Okay, right. First of all, um, the things that you've done in the past have been um, basically using triangles in order to find stuff. Um, on this particular thing, you'll note that I don't have any triangles. Okay, so if the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to develop some little triangles on this thing. Um, what I would do is I would just, I'm just going to use this orange pencil over here and I'm going to draw some triangles in. Um, right, let's start out. I'm going to go from one up to B over there. I'm going to go from two up to C over there. I'm going to go from three up to D over there. And I'm going to go from four up to A over there. All right, my next thing that I'm going to try and do is to identify the true lengths. Uh, in the last video I did, I spoke about the fact that if things are parallel to the XY axis, as you can see, all of these lines, A and D and B and C, they parallel. Therefore, I've got a true length there, a true length there. If I've got a point view of a line, then I've got a true length there and a true length there. And the same goes for here. Number one and four is parallel. Therefore, I've got a true length there. Number two and three, I've got a true length there. And because I've got a point view, I've got a true length there. And because I've got a point view, I've got a true length there. Right. Okay, the lines that I don't have tree lengths for are these lines over here. Um, between 1 and A, you can see that 1 and A in both of these views are not parallel or point view, so I end up not knowing what the true lengths are. How do I find a true length for these lines that are not parallel or a point view? Well, I've got a little graph over here. You can see there's my height of the object, that green line over there. I've transferred that same green line over here. So I've got the true height of the object. And from there, what I, I'm going to do is I'm going to take this measurement of 1A, which is my starting line. I always start with the seam. 1A off the top view. I take that up over here and I make a little mark. I label that as 1A. All right, 1A. Now what I can do is I can draw in a line over here. Just draw a line going from one, from the true height of the object down to 1A, and that over there is the true length of line 1A. Once I've got that, I come across here, and I'm going to draw a construction line. I'm going to measure off my distance of 1A of this thing over here. And I'm going to mark that off over there. I'm going to just get that so that I can see it. There we go. There is point little a over there, one over there. Reason why I've got little a over there and one over there is that this development is going to curve around that in that direction. And obviously the long sides must be on that side. The short sides must be on this side for that to happen. All right, I can draw that line in dark straight away. My next thing is to try to find where, um, where B is, all right? I know the true length distance from A to B. That's straight off the top view over here. That was easy. A to B, 
I'm going to draw a nice long arc over there. But how do I know how far one is away from B? Well, remember I drew that orange line in over there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, measure off this distance from one to B over here. I'm going to take that up to my, um, my graph over here. I place it at the base of the graph and I mark off a little mark there. I'm going to label it as 1B. Okay, and I can now draw in a line going from 1 to B. Note the orange line that I'm using over here. That's that orange line there. That is the true length of the distance of 1 to B. Okay, once I've got that distance over there of 1B, right there, that distance over there, I'm going to just take my measurement of 1 to B over there, measure that off very accurately, and I go over here, I know that somewhere along that arc I'm going to find B, there's 1 over there, and I mark off where position B is by intersecting those two arcs, I've got my little arc over there, and B I've found over there. I can now join that up with a line, and you can draw a little dashed line normally, or some sort of line that's something like that. Okay, I should probably just use my orange line because I'm using coloring in pencils. There you go, there's my orange line going from one to B. There's the orange line going from one to B. But that over there is the true length of the orange line going from one to B. And I've transferred that length down to there, intersecting with the arc that I drew from A. Okay, my next thing is to go to, um, to try and find where 2 is. I know the true length distance from 1 to 2 is over here. I'm going to draw an arc from 1 to 2. Okay. Uh, do I have a true length distance of 2 to B? Well, no, I don't. Um, I can take that measurement over there. I can go to my true length graph over here, and you'll find that it's at exactly the same point as 1A. The reason being is that line and that line are the same length, and there's the same length over there, so this length of line that I've got over here can also represent, and let me just label that, 2B. Okay, 2B can be represented by this little line over here, Take that line over there, go to B, and mark off on that little arc that I drew, 2. I can now draw in a line going from 1 to 2, and I can draw in a line going from 2 to B. Right, okay, once I've got that, and my next thing is to find the distance from 2 to C, okay? Or actually, let me just work logically. Let's go from B to C. I've got the true length distance over here of B to C. There's B, C. I can take an arc, nice long arc over there. Somewhere along that arc, I will have C. I need the true length distance now between 2 and C. How do I find that? I take this distance off the top view from 2 to C. Place that down over there, and I must label that as 2C. Okay, I'm going to draw a line going in there, so an orange line. There we go, going down to 2C over there, and I'm going to now take that true length distance of 2C Going to go to 2 over here, mark off C. There is C. I can now draw in a line going from B to C. And I can draw in an orange line going from 2 to C. Obviously, that would be your little dashed line that I told you to do. Right, the next thing that I need to go and find is 3. Do I have a true length distance of C to 3? No, I don't. Okay, C to 3. Let's find that true length distance over there. C to 3. 
come over to the graph over here, label it as C, or 3C, sorry, 3, 3C. There we go. And I can draw in a line going from 3 to C. It's just a normal gray line going down there. Right, 3C. I'm going to take my true length distance of 3C off here. Go to C over there and draw an arc. I need to draw a true length distance from 2 to 3. There's my true length of 2 to 3. Go to there and mark off that true length distance from 2 to 3. Draw in a line going from there to there, and draw in a line going from there to there. Right, next thing. I hope that I'm not going to run out of space over here. Um, okay, our next thing is to go from 3 to D. Do I have a true length distance of 3D? Um, no, I don't. There we go, 3 to D is that distance. I need to go to my graph over here, mark that off. And mark that as 3D. I'm going to take that distance. It's an orange line over there. 3D. Okay. I now take that true length distance from 3 to D over here. I haven't marked 3 yet. Okay, there is 3. I can now measure that off over there. Make a nice long arc over there. I know that somewhere along that arc, I've got D. Do I have a true length distance from C to D? Yes, I do. That distance over there on my top view is a true length because that's a point view. I can do a little arc over here. And I end up with a true length distance of C to D. Mark that as D. And a orange line going across from D to 3. Okay, what do I still need? I need a true length distance between 3 and 4. Do I have that? Yes, I do. I've got a 4, 3 true length on this top view over here because 4 and 3 is a point view. I can measure off that true length distance between 3 and 4. Okay, do I have a true length distance between D and 4? No, I don't. I need to take my true length distance between D and 4 off here. Come over here, you'll see that it is the same distance as 3C over there. So uh, 4D and 3C have the same true length. I can take that measurement off there. Come over here, measure that off accurately. And go over there from 4 to D. There is my true length distance from 3 to 4 and 4 to D. Draw that in and that in. I think that I'm going to run out of space doing the last side. Okay, the last one that I need to do is to go back to A. I, do I have a true length distance from D to A? Yes, I do. I can take that off the top view over here. A to D. A to D. There we go. I think that I might get lucky here. Um, and I need to get a true length distance from 4 to A. There is 4 to A over there. I do not have that true length distance, so I need to go to my graph over there. I'm going to mark that off, and I'll find that it's the same as um, 2C. It's the same length, actually. So, um, so 4A and 2C should be the same. Let me just check that. Not actually... No, sorry, that's not the same. Okay, so 4A, there we go. I need to measure that off, place that down, and I can get that over here. That's 4A, 4A over there. Got this true length distance of 4A over here, and down over there. And I can now take that true length distance of 4A, 4A, come over here. There's by 0.4, which I haven't yet labeled, 4, 
and that arc over there is A. Okay, um, and I can now draw in D. I can then draw in the orange line going from 4 to A. And I now need to find the true length distance between 1 and 4. There we go. There's the true length distance between 1 and 4. Go over there to 4. Draw a nice long arc over there. And I need to get the true length distance of 1A. I already have that. Remember, there is 1A. I can actually take it off this view if I really want to. There it is. Or I could take it off there as well. Um, but I can now mark that off on the that point over there is number one remember we always need to go back to our starting point of 1a so that when we link this thing up we end up with that transition piece folded together with the two edges joining right there it is that is the whole of 816